a low time bank wherever whenever be in control and transfer funds or pay bills quicker with just a few taps and a swipe plus we're serious about security want real-time notifications for all your transactions check log in with fingerprint check turn your credit card on and off triple check protected your money is safe and secure bank wherever whenever you choose with a new scotia app Oliver, is all that hollering out, my name? Who are you following me? Go ask Kosha Bank. <laughs> Quick. Go in the bank. All foot like we've it and away hard and bank online. And that's safe? It's the safest thing. Just download the Scotia app or go to Scotia online for everything like transfer or check your balance and everything online free. Free? Bank with Scotia online. Let me show you. It... But I'm not going with my phone. Eh? Thank you and welcome to season two in Scotia Live webinar. I'm your moderator, Chanel Anderson, Senior Manager, Client Advisory Services at Scotia Investments. And thank you for joining us this evening. Today, we'll be talking about building and maximizing your wealth. We're gonna walk you through that journey and take you through steps that you can actually take in order to realize that dream. 
Joining us today, we have David Swaby, who is our investment advisor in the Mandeville branch, as well as Venise Allen, who is our senior investment advisor. Both of them are millennials, young, smart, and knowledgeable. They're going to walk us through how it is exactly that you can realize your dreams. David, can you take us through a few of... But before we go to David, we're actually going to... We're actually going to share a few important insights with you and then we're going to invite you to send us some questions and we'll try our very best to answer them. I am going to invite you to throw the questions in by the Zoom chat as well as the Instagram live and then we'll try and address them. David, can you take us through, you know, how to get started in terms of, you know, realizing your financial dreams? All right. Thanks, Chanel. Uh, but before we get into all of that, um, we'd like to begin by first defining saving and investing. So while the, the terms are often used interchangeably, um, saving and investing um, are not exactly the same thing. They both involve diverting funds from your regular spending, um, but the outcomes tend to be entirely different. Now, if you're a newbie, uh, you would probably first begin by putting aside some money in your regular savings account um, and build this into a fund then you can, that you can then divert to some other type of fund that gives you a greater rate of return. Now, this helps you to cultivate a habit of putting aside money. Important in this um, is budgeting and earmarking what we recommend um, an average of about 30% of, of your total income for this venture. But not to worry, if you are not able to do this, then an advisor would be able to help you to determine a more manageable amount for this kind of activity. It involves some sacrifice. I know that as Jamaicans, we like to spend money on our fast food. We like to spend money on entertainment. We like to shop and that kind of thing. But it is important um, that you start by saving and this will help you to build a habit that over time will help you to become a better investor. Um, also important in this Chanel is saving uh, or putting aside some money in an emergency fund. We usually recommend about three to six months of your spending needs. But again, if you cannot do this, then an, an advisor will be help you to, to determine a more manageable amount. Now, if we were to move on to investing, then what we would be doing is putting aside a lump sum, maybe an amount that you would have been saving toward um, over a certain amount of time. Right. And usually, you do invest for the long term. Um, so this lump sum, once you set aside, then you'd begin to, to add to it in increments in order to meet your long-term objectives. What ties all of this together is professional advice, so it is always important to get the help of a licensed financial advisors, such as those that we have here at Scotia Investments, and they would help you to be able to better manage your expectations um, and to manage the risk which may, which may be involved over time. Interesting. Those are some real interesting points, David. So pretty much we're looking at lump sum investments or lump sum deposits at a time and we're looking at long-term investments so we're setting aside these funds for the long term for a future goal that you know we're expecting to get some greater returns than just putting your money on a savings account that, Interesting. That, that's correct Chanel um, and before we go further uh, we I'd want us to discuss um, investing right. um, and, and investing seriously so it doesn't matter what your, what your time horizon is. It may be three years or five years or maybe even 10 years, whatever the case is. It is important, and I cannot stress this enough, it is important that you speak with a licensed financial advisor and that person will be able to help you to, to assess your financial goals. Um, and important in this too is for our new investors to write down what their financial goals are. Um, and this helps to concretize um, these goals in the minds and it, it helps to p appear more real to them um, right. and also the advisor would be able to help you to determine um, how to budget um, for investing um, and where you can divert spending from in order to meet your your goals um, so once you begin to divert money 
um, from your regular discretionary spending, you are able to build an opportunity fund. And what this really is, is an accumulation of funds that you have accessible and available in the event a, a, an opportunity arises, such as an IPO, or the opportunity to make the down payment on your home or to purchase a car. This gives you accessible funds to do that. Um, and all this is in keeping with your risk appetite and your time horizon. David, you mentioned IPO, but what really is an IPO? What's all right. an IPO? All right, so an IPO um, is initial public offering. Right. And this is when an entity comes to market um, and they decide to um, list shares or issue shares for the company so that individuals can buy into that company and be able to, to earn a share of the profits. Okay. Um, also, um, Chanel, um, when persons invest, their investment needs may be for the long term, but there are some individuals who have short-term um, investment needs, and what they're looking for is something that will give some dividend right. or some kind of time um, income distribution that will help to supplement their traditional um, income needs. Um, so products um, such as our US dollar index fund or, or Caribbean income fund are products that would be able to, to help um, with this kind of supplementary income stream. Um, and these options um, could be US dollar or Jamaican dollar denominated. Um, they offer some amount of principal security um, to, to provide that supplementary income. Right, it's interesting. So is there any way you could probably share with us what are some of the performances over time, maybe over a 10 year period as it pertains to these funds that you mentioned earlier? Yes, there is. But before we get into that, um, okay. um, Chanel, um, an advisor, when you speak with an advisor, an advisor will be able to, to walk you through an assessment. So they will probably ask you a few questions um, and this would help them to be better able to, to learn what your own um, unit right. needs are um, and to customize a portfolio that, that fits your needs. So right. a, a portfolio is like a prescription. So what is recommended for you is not necessarily what, we, what would be recommended for a family member right. or, or a friend. Um, so you may fall, you generally fall within three main um, profiles, conservative, moderate, or aggressive, or a mix between these. Um, and an advisor would help you to truly assess um, the kind of products that are most suitable for you. So now if we were to get into um, fund performance, um, at the top of the screen is the Scotia Premium Growth Fund, which is something that an aggressive, perhaps an aggressive um, investor would go for. And it shows you where if you had invested uh, $10,000 in 2012, then today that, would, that um, investment would be valued at around 40000 Jamaican dollars. Um, again, the Scotia Global Equity Fund is another kind of fund that is geared towards persons with a more aggressive appetite and perhaps looking for long-term growth in their portfolio and it shows where if you would have invested uh, $10,000 in 2012 then today that would be valued at around $17,000. That's awesome David. So for aggressive investors we recommend something more right. um, aggressive where we can get some real returns right. so we, and that's, that means taking on some more risk. Right, right? so we, we generally rec recommend um, investments that um, have a more long-term outlook. Right. Um, so investing perhaps in stocks or in stock funds, equity funds, growth funds, um, th those would be suitable for persons with long-term horizons and a more aggressive risk appetite. Again, if, if viewers were to look at the top of the screen, then they would see the performance of the Scotia US, US dollar money market fund. Um, and the $10,000 invested in 2012 would be val valued at around $10,400 today. Now, persons may ask why this low level of return, but this is geared towards persons who are extremely conservative. They want to take on absolutely no risk. Um, what they are interested in is preservation of their capital. And the, um, if the, our viewers understand risk and return, um, they would understand that if you take on no risk, then the, the return is usually low or minimal. Um, again, if they were to look at the Scotia US dollar equity fund, they would see that funds invested in 2012, $10,000, would be 
would be valued at around 25,000 um, US dollars today. Right. Thank you, David. I don't know about you, but I want my money to grow. So I'm an aggressive investor. <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> so I want my money move from 10,000 to 16,000 or from 10,000 to 46,000. Right. right. And, 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 and I would understand that because you are on the younger side. So you have a bit more time where you can manage the ups and downs in your portfolio and correct. with the help of your advisor to make adjustments over time. Correct. Interesting. So um, did we touch on the fixed income fund in terms of the Jamaican dollar side, what opportunities there may be? Right. Um, so our fixed income fund is, uh, is one of our other funds um, that is geared toward persons with a more a moderate risk appetite. And what this does, um, when you invest in that kind of fund, it allows you to, to get um, capital appreciation over time. Um, and tying all of this together, um, Chanel is is ensuring that you have um, a portfolio that is comprised of, of different products to meet your needs. All right. Um, to Chanel, um, investors should also be in a position where they are interested in learning about um, investments. So it is important to read. And you don't need to get your hand uh, on all the professional information out there. <laughs> right. What you need to do is to understand as an investor that it is a personal journey. So what works for your friends, what works for your family members will not exactly work for you. Um, investing is, is for the long term. Um, as a newbie, don't try to time the market. Start investing now, um, especially when you're young. Um, now is the best time to start because you are able to make adjustments to your portfolio over time to ensure that you get the most out of your portfolio. Um, stay invested when the time gets rough. Um, don't panic. Don't pull out. Make your advisor your best friend um, and they will help, to help you to sift through the facts to ensure that you are getting the most from your portfolio. Um, and Chanel tying all of this together is ensuring that you have a diversified portfolio, um, a portfolio that has um, products across, across different asset classes, such as cash, income, and growth, or across different currencies um, or countries, whatever the case may be, but balance is key. Um, so um, if you have a, a short to medium term um, horizon, perhaps you want to look at unit trust or mutual funds products, um, but don't put your, all your eggs in one basket. Ensure that you have a mix of products that when there are occurrences in the market, that if one segment of your portfolio underperforms, then there's another segment of your portfolio that helps to pick up the stock. So diversification really is key. Absolutely. David, key. that's pretty much what you're saying. Absolutely. That's interesting. Interesting discussion so far. I hope our audience is actually enjoying the topic and enjoying the discussion and having some learning from this. Let's take a break now and have some questions. So our first question is from Damien Palmer, and Damien is on Zoom. How do I go about investing as an, as an amateur investor with no business background while minimizing the risk? David, right. any feedback on that? Uh, thank you for that question, Damien. That is a very good question. But can I tell you that you need no experience to invest? What you need to do is call one of our Scotia Investment Advisors, mm -hmm. and we'll help you in planning your portfolio and ensuring that we give you the right mix of products tailored just for you to ensure that you meet your, your financial objectives, be they for the short term or long term. Thank you for that. Uh, there you have it, Damien. So our next question is from Alicia, and this is on IG. If I invest, say, 50000 how much interest would I get on that over a six-month period? Benins, would you be able to take that for us? Definitely. Thank you, Alicia, for that question. First of all, investments is very dynamic and very unique to every individual. As David would have said earlier, and it's like a prescription. So to say that what the outcome would be specifically for you, Alicia would require that you speak to an investment advisor who will break it down um, as it relates to the risk appetite. And we will touch a little bit more about, um, relating to time horizon that will impact your investment and that will give you some insight into the returns that you can expect from that 50 thousand dollars great thank you so much Benis. alicia there you have it we have another question and this is coming from caribbean world which is ig which is on ig 
What is the best way to invest to, fu to, invest to fund your college education? David? All right, thanks for that the question, Caribbean world. Um, again, it all depends on how long you want to, to invest for. Um, so I don't know if you're investing for your child for the long term, um, and that child is say three, four years old, or you are investing for yourself to earn your, um, your postgraduate um, degree. Um, so it all depends on timing, your time horizon, what your risk appetite is, um, and then speaking with a licensed financial advisor, such as those here at Scotia Investments, would be able to determine what would be best for you, that amount that you need to hit to ensure that you meet your, your financial objective. Thank you, David. So this comes as no surprise, right? We have another question coming from Ali Jade on Zoom. I'd like to know, what's the difference between the Scotia Mint and the Scotia Investments when planning for the future of myself and my family? Venise? Okay, Ali Jade, thank you for that question. So the Scotia Mint is, an invest, is a Scotia investment product that is geared more towards meeting your, sorry, it's Scotia insurance product that is geared more towards meeting your insurance needs, while the, um, the Scotia, the Scotia Investments is more investment products that is unique, of course, to your time horizon and risk appetite, as David would have spoken to earlier. Thank you. So we have another question, which is our final question for this segment. This is from that guy Dane on IG. Do you have an online trading platform, David? Do we? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, Chanel. Um, not as of yet. We don't have an online trading platform, but uh, we are working on it, um, I, and it will be um, available shortly. Thank you so much, David. So we're going to squeeze in one more question. I know you're all excited and you really want to know, you know what you can do and get some you know, financial advice from us on screen. But... Uh, before I do that, before I read the, last, the next question, I'm going to actually encourage you all to submit your questions via Zoom, via uh, Instagram Live on the chat box so that we can, you know, feed your questions through before the segment ends. So our last question is Algorithm IG. Does Scotia offer mutual funds for investors to participate in? Uh, Venice, do you want to take that one for us? Oh, absolutely, Algorithm. Um, we do have a diverse array of mutual fund investments and that are geared towards different underlying investment options. There are money market options, there are more um, fixed income options, and there are growth options as well. So there are quite a vast variety of mutual fund options, and we'll touch a little bit more on those in our next segment as well. Thank you, Venice. There you have it, algorithm. So, Venice, while you're on the floor, do you mind walking us through what recommendations you have for persons who perhaps are just starting out and would like to know, you know, how to go about doing so? Oh, definitely, Chanel. Thank you so very much. Um, the world of investments, as I said before, is very dynamic and very um, exciting, to say the least. But for a newbie, we would recommend that you start simple. We don't want to overwhelm you at all. And by starting simple, we'd go back to our mutual fund as one of our um, listeners would have asked about earlier because that offers you the opportunity for diversification of your funds. And David did allude to the, how important that is. And if COVID has taught us anything, it is the importance of diversification. So by investing in mutual funds, it gives you that option for diversification. And also for persons who aren't very knowledgeable in the market, that's also an opportunity for our fund managers who understands the intricacies of the market to manage your funds for you because investing does require some amount of periodical um, restructuring but by investing in mutual funds you have that peace of mind that our fund managers are restructuring and investing on your behalf the next option would be to categorize your investment be it so we're going into to time horizon, which is the, another segment to look into when you are considering investing. So David would have touched on the risk appetite. We're looking now at the time horizon. Now, your investment can be short term, medium term or long term, depending on what your goals are. What short-term goals would look like are those goals that need to be met within a 12 to 18 month period. So those short-term goals, if you're nearing the purchase of your home or you're nearing um, fulfilling your educational needs or if you have emergency fund 
option, investment option as well. That's where you look for your short-term investments, and those are primarily money market instruments. Um, there are short -term, there's medium-term goals, sorry, as well, and those are for persons who may have goals within a three to five-year span, um, where you're in that three to five-year um, goal of achieving your home, it may be to um, have a child or maybe to um, start your master's. Those are considered medium term goals and we're looking more towards our fixed income funds or Scotia fixed income um, fund is a great opportunity to look at for those medium term goals or our US dollar index fund or our Scotia um, Caribbean income fund are great mutual fund options to look into for your medium term goals. Um, our long-term goals now, these are for persons who may be investing towards their children's education. Say your child is um, um, young, young. Um, this is a great opportunity to start planning. Retirement goals are excellent long-term goals for you to maintain your current standard of living at retirement. You will have to do supplementary investment for you to achieve that retirement goal. And as we're speaking to millennials, um, the time to start investing is actually the first day you start working. So now is an excellent time for you to get on board with those long-term retirement goals. And we match products to each time horizon. Um, we, match each, we match products to each risk appetite, each time horizon. And that's why it's, it's so, so very important for you to have a conversation with your investment advisor. And you do get the best advice when you're open, when you lay out everything. Just have a full, con an open conversation with us so that we can steer you towards meeting those financial goals. Um, go for growth when you're young um longer time frame you have a longer time to recover if there are fluctuations over the life of your investment so now is the time to go bold know that you're young um there's just so much opportunities and if i'm to give a personal example i have invested in stocks and this year um even in a pandemic um purchased a home um fully furnished that home and um also got married all from investing in stocks so um that's just a practical example and i am a millennial so um i'm also benefiting from stocks even taking my own advice on on that level um we can look at stock opportunities on the junior or the main market um david would have touched on ipos and apos earlier on those are their opportunities there we look into fundamentals of companies to make decisions as it relates to the stock market um there's also mutual fund options that invest in stocks if you don't choose to buy stocks outrightly so you can get that diversified approach to investing in stocks and demand management from our fund managers by investing in our growth funds or our equity funds that are denominated in US dollars as well. So um, there are many, many opportunities while you're young. Uh, staying invested is, very, is the easiest way to earn wealth. Um, be consistent um, with your investment and that can be done through a pre-authorized contribution and that's where you make a commitment to contribute a portion of your income or your salary towards your investment for consistency. Um, be disciplined, very, very important investing. It is not an overnight journey. May I say that again? It is not an overnight journey. So if we can plan for the future, have a visionary mindset of what you would like your investment to look like in the future, then we can get started for sure. And you can also benefit from compounding interest once you start now. The more you add to your investment, the greater the possibilities of return because, of course, your interest is calculated on a larger figure each time you add to your fund. So don't just invest and leave it. Start with a lump sum, make your commitment, be consistent, be disciplined. Thank you, Venice. Those are some interesting points that you mentioned. Um, I know that we also have some common pitfalls that you mentioned. Um, do, I mean, I want to set up a pre-authorized contribution. Mm -hmm. what's, a, what's an acceptable amount for me to do that? Well, that goes again to what I said before about investing, investment just being just so unique to each person because that will be determined on your income, your expenses, 
all those factors play a part into deciding what right. is a good amount for you as an individual to invest. And that's why it's so very, very important for you to have that conversation with your investment advisor. We steer you in that direction. We help to guide you towards making these sound decisions. That's interesting. Um, David, I, don't, I know that... Um Vinny spoke about being bold and you also mentioned aggressive investors, but what really does that mean? I have, say, a six-month goal, but I want to invest in the stock market because I hear my friends talk about it. I know you said don't listen to your friends, but you hear all these persons talking about Vinny's getting married and Vinny's being able to, to buy furniture, furniture <laughs> from her gains on the stock market, but when we're investing in stocks, what really are we gaining from? And is it a good move to invest in stocks with, say, a six-month goal? Six-month goal? Uh, not exactly, Chanel. Um, so investments such as stocks um, is intended to be for the long term. So your time horizon should be perhaps five years or more. Um, so it doesn't matter how attractive it looks. It doesn't matter what your friends or your family member are telling you. Um, six it's months is, <laughs> yes, it's, it's very tempting, um, but six months is not exactly a reasonable time to ensure that you would maximize the earning potential that you can get from stocks. Right. So the outlook has to be long term. And when you say long term, what exactly is long term? Is it, I don't know, is it one year? Is that long term no. enough so, for you? So is as it I that said, um, five, five years or more. Um, and this would give you enough time to truly benefit from uh, the earning potential that, that the, these stocks or this stock um, uh, would possess. Okay, thank you, David. So, Venise, is, I mean, is stocks the only long-term options that I'm looking at if I want to really grow my wealth, wealth oh, in the long term? absolutely not, um, Chanel. Our mutual fund options can also run for the long term. Like I said, you can diversify. Diversification is so much, so key. We can't stress it enough. You can get a diversified suite of products, um, diversify into income and growth asset class. There are a rare... Uh, an array, sorry, of opportunities to invest in. Just so, so very important, cannot stress it enough, to just have a conversation with your financial advice. What you think may be unreachable may just be a conversation away. Big facts. <laughs> Thank you for that, Venice. David, earlier you spoke about, you know, being able to, to, to read and understand what it is that you're really getting into. But where do I, where do I get started with reading? Do I just read the, the, the Financial Observer? How do I really go about finding and unearthing that kind of information that I need to help me to invest? Well, well you know, Chanel, um, there is a wealth of information all over the place. But if you're not so sure about where to get the kind of information that would be beneficial to you, um, speaking with an advisor, um, they would be able to point you in the right direction um, to, to information that is um, on point. Um, and they would also be able to simplify um, some of that information for you in helping you to understand exactly um, what your needs are um, and how investing um, can help you to, to meet those needs. Thank you, David. That's interesting. Those are some interesting points. And thank you, Venice and David. So, uh, Venice, can you take us through some key um, takeaways as it pertains to you know, getting started and, and realizing or and maximizing our wealth, really? All right, so key takeaways goes back to um, a lot to, of what I was saying before. Establish a time horizon um, for your goals. And what David said before, your risk appetite, we help to help you to determine that's, that risk appetite. We know the questions to ask to help to determine where you fall as it relates to, the in, um, to risk appetite. Um, don't panic and disturb your investments when they um, decline. That's what we call in investment terms unrealized gain, loss, sorry. So there's unrealized losses and there's unrealized gains. And that's when your investment may fluctuate. So you may see some decline in, in your investment, especially if you're holding it for the long term. But it is only if you are to break that investment when it's in a declining state that you will actually incur that loss. That's very, very important. So that's what we call an unrealized loss. So don't panic. If you do not liquidate your funds when the fund is in its fluctuating state where it's on its decline, that's not your personal loss. Um, learn more about investing, as David said there. The good thing is that in recent years, there has been increased knowledge on investments. Whereas back in the day, all persons knew about was CDs. 
Now, persons are, are so much more knowledgeable as it relates to stocks and bonds and mutual funds. So there is a right, a, a, a right way of um, information on the World Wide Web. But information, might I say, that is not best consumed on your own, but guided by a professional um, in your conversations. Learn more about investing. Like I said, there is just a wealth of information. Don't focus only on chasing big returns. Um, like I said, consistency is key. Um, being disciplined is key. And just stick, stick to it. Stick to it. Um, just ride out the storm, even in declines. We know that in the pandemic, a lot of the funds would have suffered some decline or unrealized loss, like I mentioned before, but ride out the storm. Very, very important to invest in. It's, it's very similar to owning a business. There are just some times when your personal business may just not be doing well in a particular season, but you don't abandon your business. You have faith. You know that it will go back up. It's the same approach that you take with your investment. This is your baby. This is your money. This is your business, right? So ride out the storm, and um, investments tend to recover in the long term. Loud and clear, Venice. Yes. <laughs> so remember, we're not going to try to time the markets. Absolutely. We're not buying products based on popularity, and we're avoiding emotional buying. That's right. All right. There you have it. So we're going to move on to our questions now. We have a lot of questions coming in. I can see quite a few of them. Our first question is one Rome from IG. What are the steps to invest in my income for longer term gain? Venise, do you want to say that one? Well, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so very much for that question. Um, the steps, of course, as we, as we have been stretched, um, stressing um, in our previous conversa dialogues, um, I roam, is that you have to have a conversation with your advisor. What You are very unique, I roam. So is David, so is Chanel. The advice for Chanel is different from David, is different from you, I roam. So we have to sit with you. We have to know what those specific goals are. We have to know how much you're able to contribute towards that goal on a consistent basis. So that dialogue will help us to speak to you personally on how you can invest um, steps to invest in your income for the longer, long-term gains, sorry. Thank you so much, Venice. We have another question, and this one is coming in from Judianne Broomfield via Zoom. What investment do you have now that I can join now in this harsh economy? David, would you like to take that one? All right. Um, so thanks for, for that um, question, Julian. Um, so you want to know um, in, the, in these times um, what investments are good for you. Um, but if you were listening a bit earlier, Julian, um, then uh, you would recall um, that it is um, important that we meet your own unique needs. Right. So, you know, when people are investing, especially in difficult times like this, they are very sensitive to return and very sensitive to loss. But we need to have a conversation with you. Um, to ensure that what we suggest for you is something that meets your needs. Because even though you're thinking about what is happening in the economy now, you're also interested in how your portfolio is right. going to perform over the medium to long term. So that again, Julian, is something that is unique to you and that is a conversation that a licensed advisor um, would have with you. Right. Thank you so much for that, David. So Renee J. Uh, via Zoom asked us, if someone is currently pay paying loans, education, car loans, etc., which takes up 30 to 40 percent of monthly salary, should they start investing? If yes, what percentage? Oh, absolutely, um, Renee J. There are still opportunities for you to invest because 30 to 40 percent would still have you within your debt service ratio. ratio. Um, but like I said, we have to break down things. What are your other expenses? Um, sometimes off the top of your head, it may seem like 
I cannot do this based on all the expenses I have at hand. But if you sit with us, we, I have done this so many times. Um, practical example, I've had a client who wanted, um, had goals of traveling the world and she thought that this would not be possible for years. And just to sitting down, realizing in areas where she could cut back and all of that, we realized that this goal was actually achievable in two years. And so just have a conversation with us. We cannot stress the importance of that. We, that's what we're here for. We are available to listen and to help to guide you towards meeting your investment goals. Renee, thank you so much, Venise. Renee, I really hope that helped. So our next question is from Siobhan via Zoom. I wanted to know which in way I wanted to know ways in which I can invest and reap real profits. Half of my bills go towards rent and utility bills, but I still set aside my savings. So I just want to know, is there any way I can invest or what route I could take or go in regards to investments? David, would you like to take that um, one? So, um, Siobhan, um, it is important um, and it's a very good thing that you said that you already set aside some money for savings. So you are already on your way. So all you need to do is contact an investment advisor who would be happy to walk you through getting that done. Um, determining what your, what your financial objectives are, determining your time horizon, um, and helping you to get started on your investment journey. Excellent. Thank you so much for that, David. So our next question comes from Tanisha D. from IG. I'm a single parent of two not working, but I buy and sell. How can I get a start on investing? Well, thank you, thank you Tanisha, um, from IG, from that question. Um, now, there are still opportunities for you. I know we would have mentioned um, pre-authorized con contributions, but there are other ways that you can invest, assuming that this buy and sell may not be as consistent as earning a salary. Um, but we did mention starting out with a lump sum. And then you can contribute to your investment whenever possible for you. Like I said before, it's very unique and it can be tailored to your specific need. So we understand, Tanisha, that your buy and sell business may not be as consistent. But if we can get a start and then you can find our, or when you see opportunities to invest again, then we can take up those opportunities as well. So we can definitely have a conversation. All right, so we have a question coming in from Kay on IG. Is it too late to invest for my son who already started university? David, would you like to take that one for Kay? All right, um, thanks for that question, Kay. So it all depends on how long ago your son started university. Because remember that you have... And also, it depends on the kind of need that your son has. Um, are you saving for tuition? Or are you saving for pocket money? Or that kind of thing. So it all depends on, on what the need is. And then uh, you speak with an advisor who will help you to determine whether or not that is short term, um, medium or long term. And then be able to guide you into determining the right mix of products that would help you um, to do that. Um, congratulations to your son, by the way. Um, but yes, it is important that you speak with us. We determine the time that we're working with, um, determine what your risk appetite is so that we can guide you um, toward uh, creating a portfolio that would help to, to meet your financial objective. Thanks for that, David. So Dorothy P. from Zoom is asking, what investments would you suggest for pensioners? Dorothy P., definitely for pensioners, you want to go easy. You really want to go for something that is safe for you. As a pensioner, you no longer receive a steady stream of income from a salary. You get a pension, and a pension is more, you know, a fraction of what you usually earn from your salary. So you want to go, definitely go into safer investment. So you wouldn't go bold, as David recommended earlier, for the more aggressive persons. You would have a more conservative portfolio. But to go into it further, I'm going to highly recommend that you speak to an investment advisor who will be able to sit down with you and go through step by step what those opportunities look like. We have a question from Rona, which is on Zoom. What type of investment do I need to have in order to own a home? Venise? Oh, absolutely. Um, Rona, that would be dependent on how, as I would have mentioned before about the time horizon, how close you are or, or how far you are towards um, saving for that home. So is it that you are at your medium term journey, which is three to five years, 
or longer than five years, which would be a long-term goal. So that would be dependent. So we definitely have to have a conversation surrounding um, what's the time horizon that you have for this specific goal for us to advise what would be best suited for that type of investment. Awesome. Thank you so much, Bernice. So we have a question from, is it next? I'm just going to call it next. <laughs> from IG. How do I go about speaking with an advisor without having to visit the bank? David. All right. So uh, thank you for that question. In this day and age, it's very easy to find an investment advisor in yes. Scotia Investments. Um, just call one of our branches. There are advisors there who are willing and ready to speak with you. Um, you can also visit our website um, for further information, but I guarantee you there's no investment advisor in Scotia Investments who would not want the opportunity to speak with you. All right. Thank you so much for that, David. Interesting. <laughs> we also have a question from Marcio, who is on Zoom. I'm looking to grow my wealth aggressively in 15 well, 10 to 15 years, what do you recommend? This is an aggressive investor. Aggressive investor. Bold. Absolutely. Venice, you want yes, to say Yes, Marcia is definitely, definitely bold. And 10 to 15 years is quite long term. So they, we're looking more at those aggressive options. So you're looking more, you can go towards mutual funds. You can go look towards your, your growth options. And you can diversify into some income options as well. So those mutual funds that, whose underlying assets are bonds and stocks, are great options or you can choose to purchase these bonds or stocks individually as well and that's specifically for our aggressive investor who has that long-term time horizon thank you venice and for <laughs> or for boulders or bold investors aggressive investors it's always good to you know diversify your basket as david mentioned earlier so you really want to look at a mixture of your you know your aggressive stocks and all those niceness but you want to balance it out a bit also with some stream some income stream some consistent income such as bonds and you want to ladder your bonds based on your you know your maturity dates so there you have it uh christine from zoom says or is asking my child is a minor can she or can he or she be a beneficiary on my investment account david all right so thank you very much for that question christine um so no your child cannot be a beneficiary on your account if you or she is a minor um but you can have up to three joints on your investment account adults um with scotia investments um but perhaps speaking with an advisor um, helping to determine um, what would be best for you um, in terms of being able to set up something that is beneficial um, to that child or taking advantage of the array of products um, that are available across the Scotia group. Um, if it is that you specifically want to have your child as a, as a beneficiary um, for your account. Definitely. Thank you so much, David. So Rob Tachar from, in, from IG is asking, what advice, this is something I asked earlier, David, about reading and knowing what's happening. What advice would you give someone who wants to become more financially literate? Venice or David? Well, either of you. Oh, definitely. Um, as we had discussed earlier on, there is just there is just so much more material now on investment as it was back back then. Um, the Jamaica Stock Exchange is an excellent website. There are so many other websites on the World Wide Web that can provide you with information. But of course, I will also stress the importance of being guided by a professional with these material because there is risk and time horizon that is involved in what you may have, um, what you may see um, in the market. So we'd love to help to guide you through those as well. All right, so we're keeping it moving. Thank you so much for that, Venice. We have a question from Leonard on Zoom. What if something major happens and I need cash? I need to cash out my portfolio. Uh, is that option available to Leonard? David, would you like to uh, assist? Leonard, thanks for that question. Um, so cashing out your portfolio is always last resort. So if it is that something has happened, um, and you believe that you need to encash your portfolio, first speak with your advisor 
um, and they will be able to guide you about what your options are um, because we would not want you to be um, in cash in your portfolio before you've met your, your right. objectives. So speaking with your advisor, they'd be able to provide more guidance on alternative options that are available to you um, to prevent you from having to disturb um, your investment funds that you would have spent so much time building your portfolio and looking toward meeting your needs. Thank so you again, for that, David. making your investment advisor your best friend is key in getting guidance on, on, on situations such as these. Thank you for that, David. It's interesting. So I'd like to add two things to that, Leonard. So the first thing is one of our key principles, you know, in investment in investing is uh, stay invested right and so that brings me to my second point if it is that you really see yourself needing cash or you know you you find an opportunity that comes up and you would love to, to to make the most of that opportunity then we advise persons or we encourage persons to look at using your assets you can actually use your assets as security right david you can use your assets right. as security and get a loan against your assets so you keep your money invested you keep earning on your investments and especially if you're in it for the long term, you definitely would um, see some gains there. Right. All right. Thank you so much for that. Uh, Dennis Ellis on Zoom, he's asking, my son is nine years old. What kind of investment would I need to start to have funds for tuition for university in the next eight years? Venise, would you like to help us there? Sure. Thank you for that question, Dennis Ellis. All right, so in this question, we have time horizon, but we don't have any risk appetite. So because of right. that, um, we would not be able to answer this question on spot because the risk appetite is a very key component, component into um, deciding your investment um, compilation, um, the suite of investment products that you will um, invest in. So we definitely have to have a conversation, Dennis, um, so that we can ascertain that risk appetite, uh, even though we know that it's definitely a long-term investment. Right. Thank you, Venice. Uh, maximizing your wealth. I think this is an important and a very interesting segment in our series. So Daniel, and I say that because of, because of the amount of questions that we're getting, right? Yes. Daniel from Zoom is asking, what industry should I look at if I'm interested mm. in stocks? I love that one. Which one of you boulders? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'll take that one. Um, historically, we would have seen that the um, financial mark, the financial industry would have been a leading industry on the stock market. But what we're realizing now is that the manufacturing and distribution markets is doing, um, is taking the lead at present. And that has a lot to do with the government's push towards diversifying our economy more into manufacturing and distribution. And as such, the stock market has also followed suit. Um, but the financial market is, financial sector is still a very um, excellent sector to look at um, or industry to look at on the stock market. But for now, just to answer that specific question, we'd say that the manufacturing and distribution um, industry is leading currently on the stock market. Thank you for that, Venice. You're so we have a welcome. question from Carlene Smart, and Carlene is asking, can you share the difference between bonds and stocks, David? All right. Um, excellent question, Karen Smart. Um, so uh, stocks um, afford you um, the opportunity to get an ownership stake um, in a company. Um, and when you purchase stocks, um, you are entitled to a share of the profits. And also, in terms of... Um, being a part of your portfolio, you're able to earn um, in two ways from your, your stocks, um, by capital appreciation, by um, price movements in the stock over time, as well as dividends that the company may declare um, to investors who hold those stocks. Um, in relation to bonds, bonds are issued by corporates or sovereigns, so a company or a country may come to the market and they will say that I am um, borrowing X amount of money from the market um, at a specified interest rate um, for a specified amount of time and I am inviting you to buy into that. So dependent uh, on what your need is and what your, your resources are, then you would buy um, some of those bonds or a share of the bonds 
um, and be able to benefit from timed um, interest payments over time um, in line with your risk appetite and with your time horizon, of course. Thank you, David. Thank you so much for that. So Tian on Zoom is asking, can you be too young to invest? I'm 20 years old, but I'm not sure if I'm thinking too far ahead. Of course not, Tian. Absolutely not. So <laughs> it's never too early to start investing. <laughs> Um, earlier, I mentioned one of our principles, which is stay invested. Another one of our principles, we actually have four of them. Another one of them is invest early. You really want to get ahead of the game and you want to start out early. So, you know, we went through the different time horizons for investments. We went through different goals for investing. And so, especially when you start early, you find that you, you know, when, by the time you're, you're, you're 30, that's just 10 years into investing. And based on the graph that we discussed earlier, if you did stocks and you started out at $10,000, then you'd have, all, you'd have more than doubled that in an equity fund. Yes. So definitely you want to start out early, but if you didn't, it's never too late to get started. All right, our next question uh, comes from Chelsea. And that's on Zoom. What is a fair amount for monthly pre-authorized contributions? David? All right, so Chelsea, thanks for that question. Um, that fair amount is dependent on your own unique right. situation. So when you speak with your advisor, we together will help you to determine what that fair amount is considering your income um, and your resources that you have available for investing would help you to determine what that uh, fair amount for a pre-authorized contribution is. Definitely, definitely. Thank you, David. So Keisha from IG Live has the investment market reco co recovered from COVID-19 as yet. Venise, what would you say to Keisha? Thank you, Keisha, for that question. Um, what we're seeing is that the market is not what it used to be for sure, but it is definitely better than it was last year. So, um, but as we mentioned earlier on about those bold investors, for persons who want to take that plunge, go more aggressive, take on bold opportunities, now is the time for invest, um, to invest. Um, you'd have seen that the net asset value for a number of the mutual funds would have fallen off. So now would have been the time to um, invest in those mutual funds so that when they recover, you will benefit there. If you're looking stock market as well, um, the key the key principle of stock market is to buy low and to sell high. Very similar again to owning a business. If you're in the business of selling pens, if you buy the pen for $10, obviously you want to sell it for $15 or $20. So now that a number of the stock prices have fallen off for those aggressive investors who want to take up those sorts of opportunities, now is an excellent time to do so. That's right. That's right. Definitely. Thank you, Venice. So Anika from Zoom is asking, how long do I need to be investing to start seeing growth in my portfolio? David? So I'll take that like one. To... So Anika, sure. thanks for that question. Um, so you mentioned an important uh, word there. You said growth. Um, so if you say growth, I'm assuming that you have an aggressive risk appetite um, and you're looking to invest for the long term. And so if you are that kind of person, then my expectation is that you are prepared to hold your investment for, say, about five years or more. And so whatever risk um, that you or whatever volatility that your portfolio may be exposed to, um, with an aggressive risk appetite, that would be a good time in which we believe that you'll be able to realize um, or to maximize the earning potential of your, your portfolio. And again, it all depends um, on how your, your, your portfolio is comprised. Thank you, David. I'm really loving it. I'm enjoying this segment. Uh, we have lots of questions coming in, but we're going to take one more. I know you would all love to hear your questions answered, but we really can take just one more question. And we're going to take a question from Tracy from IG. Tracy's asking, can I make payments to a Scotia Investments account through Scotia Bank? Definitely. And Absolutely. We are one group. We're under one umbrella. And so you definitely can do that. So... I mean, there you have it. We had our A-team discussing with you what you can do, the steps you can take in order to uh, really maximize and build your wealth, you know? Absolutely. Uh, some of the key takeaways, do not panic. 
and disturb your investments when they come or when they are on the decline, right? Learn more about investing. So read, 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 read. David reminded us of some of the avenues that we can get information in order to educate ourselves and become financially literate. Uh, learn more about your investments and guys just stay invested I know you're probably interesting to interested to hear you know the other two principles of investing and so David would you like to remind us of one of them we spoke about one start investing early two we also spoke about uh, staying, staying staying invested right, so the like third one that we want to remind our, our viewers is investing regularly investing regularly and the fine one and the final one. Ensure that your portfolio is diversified. Thank you, David. So there you have it. We are more than happy to assist you at Scotia Investments. We're glad to help you realize your dreams and help you to become financially literal. Sorry, <laughs> financially literate. Uh, thank you so much for joining. Thank you, David. Thank you, Venice. And thank you to our viewers. We're here, we're here to help you. Absolutely. Have a great evening. a low time bank wherever whenever be in control and transfer funds or pay bills quicker with just a few taps and a swipe plus we're serious about security want real-time notifications for all your transactions check login with fingerprint check turn your credit card on and off triple check protected your money is safe and secure bank wherever whenever you choose with a new scotia app Oliver, is who that hollering out my name? Who are you following me? Go to Scotia Bank. Quick. Go into bank. Whole foot like we fit and away at and bank online. And that's safe? It's the safest thing. Just download the Scotia app or go to Scotia online for everything like transfer or check your balance and everything online free. Free? Bank with Scotia online. Let me show you. It... But I'm not going with my phone. Eh?